Hi everyone, it's Dr. Kat. I just want to start with something that might seem a little bit counterintuitive. Your symptoms aren't the problem. They're your body's solution to a problem that it perceived maybe even years ago. So let me explain what I mean by that because I know you're hearing, of course my symptoms are the problem. Well, let's talk about freeze today and how this relates to your symptoms not being a problem. Most people know about fight and flight, but there's a third response that doesn't get talked about enough, which is called freeze. And that is a stress response. But here's the tricky thing. Freeze doesn't always look like you'd expect. So there's this obvious kind of freeze, which is like a shutdown, can't get out of bed, completely immobilized, where your system has basically pulled the emergency brake and you are stuck. But there's also another kind of freeze that's called functional freeze. And this is the sneaky one that most high functioning people with chronic illness have been living in for years, maybe without realizing it. That was the way that I lived. Functional freeze is when you're still moving, you're still doing, you're still functioning on the outside, but on the inside, your nervous system is actually in a protective shutdown state. Meaning you're going through the motions while your body is essentially frozen underneath all of that activity. It's not digesting well, it's not detoxing well, it's not fighting infections well. So while you're working, parenting, achieving, performing, from the outside you look fine and you might even look successful, but in the inside you might feel numb or disconnected or running on autopilot. You don't really feel much of anything except for anxiety or exhaustion because you've learned to override your body signals so thoroughly that you don't even notice that you need to pee until it's urgent or you can't tell that you're uh, hungry, you just feel anxious. You have no idea what you're actually needing. You're just going, going, going. That is what functional freeze is. So you're, immo you're mobilized on the outside, immobilized on the inside. So how did we end up here? Well, this is how it happens. When you're young and the environment isn't safe, maybe your parents were stressed or emotions weren't okay, maybe you had to be the good kid, the achiever, the one who had it all together, you might have learned something very crucial, which is that stopping isn't safe, slowing down isn't safe, feeling your needs isn't safe. So you keep moving, you keep being productive and useful and needed. You stay busy enough so that you don't have to feel what's actually happening inside. You're afraid that your value is by what you accomplish. And often even your sense of worth is tainted, meaning you don't feel worthy unless you've done something good or you've done something well. And what happens is over time, your nervous system just becomes in the state of constant threat. But instead of collapsing into the most obvious form of freeze, you mobilize. You go into what looks like fight or flight, but it's actually freeze underneath. You're frozen in a state of perpetual doing, the workaholic. It's like being on a hamster wheel, constantly moving, but not actually going anywhere. So you're stuck in motion. And for a while, this might work and you might get things done and you might look successful. And people might even say, I don't know how you do it all. But your body, well, your body it holds everything. It holds all of the emotions that you couldn't feel, all of the stress that you couldn't process, all of your needs that you couldn't meet. All of it gets walled off while you keep functioning. But eventually something happens. It did for me. Maybe your system just hits capacity. Maybe there's a triggering event like an infection, a loss, a period of overwhelming stress. And maybe, and this is common, you finally have a moment where you think you can rest, like a vacation, a weekend off, a period where the external demands ease up and your body, which has been in functional freeze for years, finally tries to do what it's been needing to do. It stops. It tries to process, it tries to feel and heal. But the problem is that your brain learned a long time ago that stopping is dangerous, that Feeling your emotions is dangerous, that slowing down means something bad will happen. So when your body tries to shift out of that frozen, like constantly in motion state, your limbic system, that ancient protective part of your brain, it's gonna panic. It says, no, we can't stop. Stopping isn't safe. We need to keep moving. And that's when you might shift from 
functional freeze into shutdown freeze. Your body is essentially forcing the rest that your brain won't allow. So you will have extreme fatigue, pain, brain fog, the inability to even do basic tasks like showering. You might like go from being able to push through anything to barely being able to get out of bed. And it can literally happen overnight and you think something has gone terribly wrong. But actually your body is trying to shift you out of that pattern that was never sustainable in the first place. And I know how scary it is if that has happened to you. It's really, our medical system doesn't seem to understand it very well. Your limbic system is responsible for survival. It processes your emotions. It attaches behaviors to your memories and it keeps you safe from threats. And when you have been in functional freeze or when you've been overriding your body signal for years, your limbic system has learned that stopping is dangerous and feeling your feelings and emotions is dangerous and slowing down is a disaster. So when your body tries to come out of this pattern, tries to slow down, your limbic system will create symptoms to prevent you from slowing down because it's trying to protect you based on an old program and a belief system. In shutdown freeze, those symptoms are obvious. You literally can't function. Debilitating fatigue, severe pain, cognitive impairment, uh, post-exercise exhaustion, things that keep you in bed for days even after just a little bit of activity. But in functional freeze, the symptoms are there, they're just different. It's the anxiety that keeps you moving and racing thoughts and the inability to relax. And even when you're trying to relax, you can't. You might have insomnia, digestive issues, the sense of being on that you can't turn off. And yet you also feel like you're just not okay. Both states, functional freeze and shutdown are your nervous system's way of managing a threat that it perceives is still there. Let's talk about the psycho neuroimmunological piece, my favorite, the science. So this is where the science gets really interesting. Your nervous system and your immune system are in constant communication. And when your limbic system perceives ongoing threat, whether that's I can't stop, which is the signal of functional freeze, or I can't move, which is the signal of being in shutdown freeze, it sends danger messages throughout the body via the vagus nerve. Now, your immune system is responding. It creates inflammation, uh, cytokines release. You enter what a lot of researchers call the cell danger response. Your body shifts your resources towards defense and protection instead of repair and health and digestion. So in functional freeze, this might look like a chronic low-grade inflammation, food sensitivities, hormone dysregulation, gut issues. You're inflamed, but you're still pushing through. And often you're on all these protocols trying to fix it, but your nervous system is responsible. So in shutdown freeze, it often looks a lot more severe. Extreme inflammatory responses, autoimmune flares, mast cell activation, severe hypersensitivities to everything. But in both cases, they are the same mechanism. Your nervous system is broadcasting threat, 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 and your immune system is responding accordingly. This isn't happening because your immune system is malfunctioning or it's, it's not broken. It's happening because your nervous system hasn't learned to come out of that freeze response. It doesn't have enough safety to do so. So let me ask you, where are you? Are you in functional freeze? Are you still doing and achieving, but maybe you kind of feel really disconnected from your body? Maybe you're moving through life on autopilot. You're overriding every signal that your body is sending. You're really productive on the outside, but numb on the inside. Or are you in shutdown freeze? You're unable to function. You're immobilized and your symptoms feel like your body is uh, totally betraying you at this point. And maybe, and this is actually common, that you cycle between both, where you have periods where you can push through, followed by crashes where you can't do anything. So here is what is important to understand. Both states are freeze. Both are your nervous system's attempt to manage the overwhelm that it's, that's been in your body. And both need the same foundational approach, which is safety and capacity building in your autonomic nervous system and your limbic system. So why can't we just push through this or why doesn't just resting more work? 
Well, if you're in functional freeze, people might tell you to slow down, rest more, stop doing much, but when you try, you actually feel worse. You get anxious and your symptoms might even increase. So then you go back to doing because that actually felt safer. I know that pattern well. Well, if you're in shutdown freeze, people might say, push yourself, get moving, don't give in to it. But then when you try, you crash harder, your symptoms explode. And so you retreat back to bed because that is all that your body can handle. And both of these approach miss the point. You cannot willpower your way out of a nervous system state. So the issue isn't that you need to do more or do less. The issue is that your nervous system is stuck in a protective pattern and doesn't know how to come out of it. It has not gotten a signal of safety. Now in functional freeze, your system is frozen in this on position, like I've said, mobilized, but not actually processing anything like a car rubbing its engine, but it's in neutral. And in shutdown freeze, your system is frozen in the off position, immobilized, conserving all of your energy because it perceives being active as being a threat. So you can't think your way out of either of these states. You have to teach your nervous system something different. This is why in Primal Trust, we start with nervous system regulation and safety, not with pushing through, not with forced rest, not even with positive thinking or protocol chasing. We're teaching your limbic system new information. It's safe to be present in my body right now. It's safe to feel the sensations in my body right now. It's safe to slow down without collapsing. And it's safe to have energy without using all of it immediately. In our program with just these very simple tools that literally you only need a handful of minutes a day to start with, these tools start to show you, look, I can be in my body and nothing bad happens. I can feel the sensation and I can be okay. I can orient to my environment and I can feel safe. And for people in functional freeze, this might be the first time in years you've actually stopped and been present. And it might feel terrible at first. Your anxiety might spike, you might feel an overwhelming urge to get up and do something. That's your nervous system saying, wait, we don't do this. This isn't safe to slow down. And for the people who have shut down freeze, this might be the first time you're inviting your system to have a bit of energy without immediately crashing. And that might feel scary too. Like what if I do too much and I pay for it? So both responses actually make sense. They're both your limbic system trying to keep you in the familiar old pattern even if that pattern isn't working anymore. So in the level one regulated primal trust, we go deep into trying to build capacity of the nervous system to handle triggers, to handle feeling symptoms, to handle a little bit of movement. It's learning how to downregulate that, that fear response and improve your tolerance for safety, stillness, and a little bit of movement without overdoing it. We teach you somatic practices that help you land fully in your body and vagus nerve toning exercises that send safety signals to your brain and that helps to turn on anti-inflammatory signals to your immune system. We help you learn how to be with sensation without needing to immediately go figure it out and do something about it. So the shutdown folks, this means that you're gently building your window of tolerance for activity, learning that you can have a little bit of activation but don't fully go into um, all out activity every time you get a little bit more energy. You learn how to pendulate between activation states and resting safe states in small manageable doses. You'll learn how to complete stress cycles so that your system learns that it can process increased emotion and stress and come back to baseline. So for everyone, regardless of where you are on the free spectrum, we're identifying your patterns, your triggers, what sends you into the overdoing mode or what makes you shut down? And what does your limbic system perceive as threatening about these things? So this isn't about fighting any of these patterns, but it's about recognizing them and working with them. Eventually we move into our deeper work. It's called our level two integrate program where we work with the underlying trauma responses that created the freeze patterns in the first place, the beliefs that set you up thinking that my worth is about how much I work and how successful I am, things like that. These early programming that says, I am valuable only when I please others or when I'm productive or when I'm useful. 
So we're gonna work with parts of you that learn really hard to keep you safe by either moving or people pleasing. And these protective patterns developed basically around the belief that if you don't do these things, you'll be abandoned and, or punished or you'll be worthless. And so it's, it's a deep pattern that we have to work with. And so for these people who are stuck in freeze, we're gonna be working with the feeling of vulnerability and helplessness and hopelessness that you're gonna to need to befriend and, and, and decide differently about the beliefs that you might have come up with as a child. Sometimes we're even going to have to meet grief, like of all those years where maybe you've lost functioning or grief that you didn't get the approval that you were always seeking. So we're working with parts of you that are terrified of trying to do things differently, terrified of showing up in the world differently. And that is why we have to build the capacity that we do in our level one program. So we do this incrementally. It's not overnight. It's a journey. Level one is two to three months, level two, another at least two to three months. So, and that's, you know, a minimum. We're slowly building this capacity so you don't get completely overwhelmed. You learn how to send signals of safety. You learn how to meet those deep wounds in a regulated way with a container that can handle it and then integrate what's been stored in your body with the present moment. Witness this inner regulated adult. So what does recovery actually look like? Here's what I want you to understand about coming out of freeze, whether it's functional freeze or a shutdown. It might look like functioning less for a little while, learning to say no, learning to let things be undone, allowing yourself to rest without producing anything can feel really terrifying. Like I said, because your system thinks it's dangerous, but you're teaching your system, I can stop and I'm still okay. I can survive, I can have needs and those things are okay. And for those who are in freeze and shutdown, recovery might look like tiny, almost imperceptible increases in capacity, meaning you're able to do five more minutes a day of activity without crashing, having slightly more cognitive clarity or sleeping a little better. And I know it can feel frustratingly slow because you want your life back right now, but your nervous system is learning, I can have a little energy and I don't need to use it all immediately. I can be gentle and it's not, it's, it's not a race. But both of these paths are gonna require patience and learning to work with your nervous system and constantly sending signals of safety instead of fighting it. It takes time, it takes months, and for some people it even can take a year or more. So this is how, in general, we retrain these patterns that are deeply embedded. So if you're in freeze, your body isn't doing something wrong, it's literally just trying to protect yourself and keep you from usually being rejected and keeping you from a type of, uh, of, of behavior that it thinks is dangerous for you. Ultimately, our nervous system is trying to keep us, you know, being useful, being loved, being accepted, and it can come up with some really mm, disruptive ways of doing that. And nobody likes to feel shut down and nobody likes to feel that raging in insomnia, but they are adaptations and they make sense to your nervous system. But you can shift these things. As you come into more safety, your nervous system learns new ways of what it means to stay connected, to find your worth, and that ultimately your value is there because you just simply exist and you're enough by simply being here. You don't need to do and achieve and you don't need to please people. So these are the kind of things that we are teaching your nervous system in primal trust. We are safe right now. We have capacity right now we can feel, we can be present. We don't need to be frozen and avoid life and avoid rejection. We don't need to overdo to avoid rejection. That is the path. This is the work. And so if you're here and you're learning about this and recognizing these patterns in yourself, uh, you know, we'd love for you to check out Primal Trust and uh, thanks for listening.